If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. The question notes that the belt does not slip around either of the wheels, and in that situation it turns out that any point on wheel C is going to have the same tangential acceleration as any point on wheel A. Let's say that again and also write in a formula. So once again, when there's no slipping between the belt and the wheels, that means that any point on wheel A is going to have the same tangential acceleration as any point on wheel C. And we can write that in a simple equation form as follows. Now it's going to be more useful to substitute in for each tangential acceleration the corresponding expression in terms of angular acceleration. We recall that tangential acceleration is equal to the radius of the wheel multiplied by its angular acceleration. So we're going to make a substitution for both sides of this equation. Notice, of course, we're using subscripts for wheel C and subscripts for wheel A. What we can do is rearrange this equation and solve it for the angular acceleration of wheel C. Let's divide both sides by RC. And we can plug in the known values on the right-hand side of the equation in order to solve for the angular acceleration of wheel C. Note that the question gives us the angular acceleration of wheel A to be 1.6 radians per second squared. So we're going to be filling that in for alpha A. And then the radii of each wheel were given in the question as well. So we'll plug in. So when we simplify this, the centimeters would cancel, and this would leave us with 0.64 radians per second squared. Again, this turns out to be the angular acceleration for wheel C. Now, the question notes that wheel A begins from rest, and that would mean that wheel C also begins from rest. So we know that the initial angular velocity for wheel C is going to be 0 radians per second, again, since it's starting from rest. We're looking for the time required for wheel C to reach an angular speed of 100 revolutions per minute. That means the final angular speed, or final angular velocity also, of wheel C is going to be 100 revolutions per minute. That's in a non-standard unit, so we're going to have to convert that into radians per second. We just recall that one revolution is equal to two pi radians. And then, of course, one minute is 60 seconds. And if we set up our conversion in that manner, the minutes are going to cancel and the revolutions are going to cancel, and that's going to leave us with radians per second. And it turns out to be 10.5 radians per second. Again, we're looking for the time, so we'll make that our unknown, and then we just have to pick a formula for the rotational kinematics and solve for the time. Perhaps the best formula to use would be this one. Remembering the initial angular velocity is zero, that would take out this term, and then we can divide both sides of this by alpha in order to solve for time. And then we simply plug in the known values for the final angular velocity as well as the angular acceleration. And when you compute that, you get approximately 16 seconds for the time. And this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.